Hey guys, it's me Shayla and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. In today's video we're going to be doing the seven things that no one warned me about about breastfeeding. So if that's something you guys are interested in, please keep watching. Okay, so all of these will not apply to just the nursing mother, but the pumping mother as well. So if you are nursing and planning to go back to work, you're going to have to pump unless you can fully transition your baby um, to food or formula before you do that. So these are all things kind of from my experience. Like I said in my previous two videos that are similar to this, you know, the seven things that no one warned me about about pregnancy and labor and delivery, which I'll put cards in up here. Um, you know, not all these are necessarily bad, negative things, and some of these aren't things that everybody experiences. This is just based on my own personal experience and things that I wasn't expecting. I might have heard about them, but I was not expecting them. So the first thing is the bleeding and how painful it can be. So if you are nursing, you probably will bleed. Your nipples will crack. They'll bleed, they'll hurt, and then the last thing you want to do is keep breastfeeding, but that's all you can do. Did this in the hospital, you know, after the first day, really. So use your lanolin cream. If you don't have it, get it. At the hospital, they usually have little samples of it, and it really does work, but you should use it before the pain starts, so that way you're preventing the, as much of the pain, as much of the cracking, as much of the bleeding as you can. And then if you start pumping, I started bleeding with the pump because my flange size was not correct. So if it's really painful to pump, try swapping either a larger or a smaller flange size because that can make a big difference. So those are my tips for the pain and bleeding. Lanolin cream, flange size if you're pumping. So the second thing is how quickly you can lose your supply. So for you know when you're nursing and breastfeeding the entire time it's a supply and demand you can't overfeed your nursing baby and your body is making it enough to keep up with what the baby needs so when you start pumping though your supply goes down and it can continue to go down so when I was going back to work I think I might have mentioned it in a previous video I was permitted to pump as often as I needed to but I couldn't make the time in my day to do it while I was at work, I could get too busy talking to patients and I would have to get cranked through some work so I could get out on time to grab Lily at daycare before they closed and things like that. So I couldn't pump as often as I had wanted to. So my decreased pumping was less supply, so I had less, I mean, was less demand, so I had less supply. And then the other thing, the biggest thing was I got a stomach bug or food poisoning, still not really sure what it was, and I was super dehydrated. My supply... Yeah? And I got super dehydrated, and I was only making three ounces of milk a day. Yes, only three ounces, Lily. So luckily, in my case, Lily used formula to supplement so I was fortunate that we had that solution, but yeah, I got super dehydrated. Another thing is on that kind of similar note is preparing to go back to work. Um, if you have a, you know, everybody's all, you know, breast is best, whatever, as long as your baby's fed, your baby's fed, right? But going back to work, you have to build up a supply in your freezer, like a stash. Um, so that way, you know, you have enough for that first day where you're not there. Like after the first day, you know, you're pumping while you're at work and when you get home, so you can kind of just send them with the, you can send them with the milk, you know, the next day. So that first day you need enough ounces to get them through the day. Um, so doing that, you know, takes a while. And for me, Lily would be cluster feeding and would clean out my freezer stash all the time. So it was really hard for me to build it up. So that's when I actually started supplementing one, one bottle a day with formula so that way I could pump right after I fed Lily the formula and then freeze that which worked for me um, but once we started with the formula it became a really easy kind of cop-out for me not gonna lie to pump so it was like oh she's hungry right now she doesn't need to breastfeed she's gonna have formula. are you okay? 
Are you being rowdy? You like formula? You like milk? And so, you know, prepare to go back to work, you know, making sure your baby can take a bottle. So after one month, so the baby doesn't get nipple confusion, it's important to introduce a bottle to them. <laughs> So, you know, going back to work, you want to make sure that they could actually drink the milk that you're pumping out of a bottle. So at about one month, it's important to, you know, try them on a bottle. Waiting that four weeks is important to prevent the nipple confusion. Finding a bottle that they like, because there are so many different ones out there. Um, so finding one that they like, that they can use, um, and getting them used to that. And I would say to do that like once a day at least, you know, for a little while. Um, to get them used to drinking out of a bottle and taking a bottle from somebody else other than you. Um, sometimes the smell of you makes them only want to nurse. So that's something to consider. As soon as Lily started drinking out of the bottle, she wanted nothing to do with the boob anymore. Like, nothing. The only time she would ever take it was in the middle of the night, which was like great timing, right? Um, so no one could, you know, my husband couldn't help me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Like, that was all me. I think she really just wanted to snuggle more than anything. Um, she only nurse for a few minutes and go back to sleep. So that was the only time she wanted to nurse. Now she doesn't nurse at all. So preparing to go back to work is like a job in and of itself. And it does take a while. So you know, at in the beginning, when you're you feel like your boobs are always engorged because you're creating so much milk, start pumping and freezing that. Um, if you go online, obviously you're online so if you you can just google like how long breast milk can stay in a freezer and start your supply as soon as you can um getting used to the pump and working it and knowing how to use it that way you can tell oh is it broken um because the pump i actually got from my insurance company was terrible um and i was shocked because i had done so much research and it said it was so great fortunately i had a backup one from a friend from my baby shower which was incredible um, which I still use and it works amazing. So, you know, working your pump, knowing how to use it, doing all that stuff ahead of time. So that when you go back to work, it's already stressful and hard enough to go back to work. Might as well make it as easy as possible. The next thing is something I've mentioned a few times in a few different videos. Um, and I mentioned actually earlier is cluster feeding. Um, and cluster feeding is hard. Um, it's when the baby eats very frequently. Um, Lily would do about half an hour of nursing, 15 minutes off, half hour of nursing or vice versa. Um, and that, that's the baby's natural instinct to do that in order to increase your milk supply. So if you notice your baby is like fussier and always hungry and you're like, there's no way they can be hungry. This is their way of making your body produce more milk, which is incredible right but it's awful um, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it so during cluster feeding times you don't make plans it kind of just happens out of the blue right before growth spurt stuff like that make sure you have plenty of water make sure you're eating plenty of snacks um, don't plan to get off the couch um, honestly I would just prop myself up in the corner of the couch and just be nursing on and off all day it really is what it was um, and it can last one day it can last three days um, the one time in the hospital I was cluster feeding, it was overnight. It was probably like a 12 hour stretch of eating constantly. Um, but that's a real thing. So if you're like, this can't be right. Why is my baby always eating? They always want to nurse. Am I not producing enough? You're probably producing enough. This is just the baby's way of making you produce more for its increase. The baby's increasing needs as well. So cluster feeding is very normal and it's not very fun. But yeah, so be prepared for that because that wasn't something I knew up until like, I didn't read about it right up until I went into the hospital to have Lily. So that was something I luckily read about but was not prepared for how fun it was. The next thing is if you're gonna pump, um, the amount of bottle pump, the dishes you have to do. There are so many <laughs> dishes you have to do and you're supposed to, you know, you obviously want to sterilize everything first so you know dip it in the boiling water for five minutes and then do all that stuff you definitely want to do that and you probably want to do that a couple times you know like I, d I try to do it once a week I try to sterilize everything again but I am washing everything after every use um every bottle you know washing all those the nipples the covers the lid all of that and then the pump parts taking the pump apart and cleaning it you're supposed to do that every single time you finish pumping so it's a pain 
but you have to do it. Um, and you don't want to use a towel to dry, you kind of want to let things air dry. So make sure you have plenty of bottles of different sizes once you find one that you like. Um, make sure you have plenty of them. Make sure you have plenty of nipples and covers and you know, if you can get a backup set of pump stuff, great. Um, you know, those really rough nights. I, I don't pump double. I know some women will do two, both boobs at once. I do one, so I only have to clean, like, the reason I do it is not because I only have to clean one pump mechanism, but it's just, that's the way I like to do it. Um, so when one's drying, I can use the other one and just kind of switch off like that. So that works for me. But yeah, be prepared for the amount of dishes you have to use. So make sure you have your bottle brush with a little, like, little tiny piece too to get inside the nipple and in the small parts of the pump attachment. And then get yourself a drying rack. <laughs> those grass ones are so cute. Um, the little like fake grass ones, those are adorable. Very aesthetically pleasing. They don't look so bad on your countertop. Um, but yeah, get a drying rack for all of your pumping needs. I touched on it earlier, but making sure that your baby can take a bottle. Um, one of my close friends, her baby, would not take a bottle and so what are you gonna do can't go back to work your baby's not gonna take a bottle and everybody's like oh yeah you know don't feed them for the day and they'll get used to it they'll you know don't breastfeed them for a day yeah no that you're gonna feel terrible about that first of all but some babies just don't like a bottle sometimes they have difficulty with the bottle like if they're tongue-tied sometimes that can impact the way they take a bottle lily actually is a little bit tongue-tied but she takes a bottle better than she nursed um, but yes, yeah, so some babies can't do it. So, you know, like I said, doing that at that one month mark, it trying different bottle types to make sure they can get it. So that way, you know, if you can go back to work or not, um, and keep trying and using different bottles. Like I said, they have Dr. Brown's, they have like tons of different shapes. So that way there's like a bottle out there for, for everybody, um, and every baby's preference. So that's definitely something that I wanted to readdress because it is super important if you're going to go back to work. Your baby needs to be able to drink out of a bottle. Unless you have a wet nurse. Which, do they even have those anymore? Anyways. So the last one, number seven, is how much you miss it. Um, I miss when Lily would breastfeed. Um, I miss when she would nurse. I pump and give her the bottles and she supplements with formula, which is fine. It's great. You know, she's growing, she's happy, she's healthy. She doesn't mind the formula at all. Um, I use the Simulac Pro Sensitive. I think I've mentioned it before, but it's just the easiest to transition between breast milk to that one because they're very, very similar. It has probiotics. You can do your research, um, but that's the one I use. She loves it. She tolerates it very well. Doesn't have any digestive issues with it. But I miss when she would nurse. Like sometimes when I just want to like snuggle her, I just wish she would nurse. I love that. It's like a bond you have with your baby, and it doesn't last forever. So if you are nursing and it does seem daunting at 3 a.m. when they wake up, when you're cluster feeding and you're like, I can't wait for this to be over. Don't say that. <laughs> Because you will miss it. I know I do. I miss it. And then a bonus one. Your boobs go crazy. <laughs> they go crazy. And you will live in your nursing bras and your nursing tanks. So stock up on them. Um, ones with the clips. Great. When you go back to work, cami or like a tank top over your nursing bra or nursing tank top. Um, and a cardigan. Button downs. I lived in them um, because, you know, having a turtleneck is not a wise choice when you are pumping. So some bonus tips for you in there for breastfeeding. But yeah, so guys, these were the seven things that nobody warned me about, about breastfeeding and pumping. And I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button below and subscribe with that notification bell as well. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.